Hey, hi guys. So in this video, we'll be discussing about chocolate distribution concept. A very good concept, fantastic concept to use in the questions of overlapping and Venn diagram kind of questions. Okay. So first of all, let's see what is chocolate distribution concept, and then we'll discuss a very good dis set on this. Okay. So make your concept clear about this. Okay. So what is chocolate distribution concept? Now understand this here. So basically, this this concept is applied in the questions of overlapping. Okay. Now what is overlapping questions? So basically, let's say for example, if I say that. uh in a group of 100 people so in a group of 100 people if i say 70 drink tea and 60 drink coffee correct that basically means that this uh, 70 people will drink tea and 60 will drink coffee that 70 plus 60 obviously will not used will not uh, will not uh, add to 100 70 plus 60 will add to 130 but there are only 100 people here That means there is some overlapping. Okay, so if I make Venn diagram, there has to be some overlapping, right? So if all the hundred people drink at least one drinks, so how do we make Venn diagram for it? So we make a Venn diagram for this, uh, for it like this. Okay, ah, uh, see here, I'll make here like this. So there's a Venn diagram for it actually. So I'll I'll make a Venn diagram for tea. I'll make a Venn diagram for coffee. I'll assume that all drinks, uh, everybody drinks at least one drink. Seventy plus sixty is one thirty. That means thirty is the extra part. Total seventy people are drinking tea. That means forty will come here. Total sixty are drinking coffee. So thirty is already here. Thirty will come here. Correct. That means forty plus thirty seventy will drink tea, and thirty plus thirty sixty will drink coffee, and forty plus thirty plus thirty will become hundred. That's it. Correct. This this is the overlapping part, right? This is the overlapping I'm talking talking about. So the questions of overlapping, they we use the concepts of Venn uh, chocolate distribution concept, right? Now obviously you will ask me that sir, how to differentiate that? uh which question is of venn diagram how to solve questions by venn diagram okay and how do you solve questions by chocolate distribution concept so similar because both are the concepts of overlapping so in which question is a very valid question that in which kind of question i should apply venn diagram and in which kind of question i should apply chocolate distribution distribution concept so they obviously venn diagram is the easiest way to solve a question because we draw a diagram like for example we can make a Three set Venn diagram and all the values are given here, okay. Or we make a four set Venn diagram and all the values are given, like exactly two, exactly three, exactly four, and so everything is given. Four set Venn diagram, three set Venn diagram, like that. So basically, it's the easiest way to solve any question, right? But the question of Venn diagram has got certain uh, restrictions, right? So in most of the cases, it is being applicable to only two, three, or four parameters, correct? Because we have a a uh, definite venn diagram for only 2 3 or 4 parameters correct so we have definite venn diagram for 2 3 and 4 parameters so in some cases we can make a venn diagram for make a venn diagram of 5 and 6 parameter also but mostly in 99% cases it is it is for 2 3 4 parameters right so in the questions where there are more than 4 parameters venn diagram is difficult to apply so that's when we we may when we use chocolate distribution concept okay chocolate distribution concept also in the questions Uh, where the information is very very less. Okay, I need to maximize. Okay, I need to minimize. I need to distribute the things. Ah, huh. so these are the questions where we apply the chocolate distribution concept. Okay, maximize, minimize, distribution. Ah, huh. more than uh, more than four parameters question. So greater than four parameters question. Okay. Obviously, overlapping. These are the concepts of overlapping. So all applicable to overlapping kinds of questions. So these are the funda we apply chocolate distribution concept. Also, when information is less, when information is very less. Okay. So for example, now if I make a four set Venn diagram, so I should know that how many people are playing exactly three sports, how many people are playing exactly four sports like that. Ah, huh? so that that info is not mentioned in the question. A very less info is given. In that case, also we can apply. chocolate distribution concept correct so for example let's let's try to sort let's try to understand it through a, a small example and then then we'll come back to the set or then then we'll go to the set okay so for example uh, if i see let's say i say that uh, in a school okay there are three base basically sports here so people playing sports here so football is being playing played by 80 people Or eighty students. Uh, badminton is been played by seventy students. Okay, and um, 
हॉकी इज बीन प्लेड बाई लेट्स ए सिक्सटी फाइव सिक्सटी पीपल ओके लेट्स गिव इट सिक्सटी करेक्ट सिक्सटी स्टूडेंट्स एंड इफ आई से देर आर हंड्रेड स्टूडेंट्स इन द स्कूल ठीक है सो दैट बेसिकली मीन्स वॉट कि इफ यू सी एटी प्लस एटी सेवेंटी एंड सिक्सटी इट एड्स टू टू हंड्रेड टेन बट वी गॉट ओनली हंड्रेड पीपल राइट दैट मीन इट्स अ केस ऑफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एंड डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन मीन्स ऑल्सो इट हैज टू बी लाइक uh uh maximize minimize i can do so basically the questions can be like this here they are ask you a question here okay so maximum number of people playing all three sports all three sports okay when all sports or each sports when each sport is being played by at least one student okay so this question they can ask here now what does this this what does that this uh, this point mean uh, mean with respect to the question so i i actually want to see that ki if there are a uh, max number of people playing all three sports when each sport is being played by at least one student that basically means that what i'll be thinking here is so total we have got 210 uh, if i add all this right so basically uh, we we want to solve it by chocolate distribution because again you can say that it's a question of overlapping correct it's a it's a question of uh, obviously so overlapping plus info is very less so we don't know how many people are playing exactly two exactly three game like that right so difficult to apply venn diagram so in fact we can apply in this case also i i can apply venn diagram but let's learn the chocolate distribution concept so which will be applicable in the next set which cannot be solved by venn diagram okay so now understand this here so what we'll do here is so now what in every question not only for this question in general is so total number of chocolates so what is actually so in question what you take total number of chocolates i need to find two things here okay so in chocolate distribution concept i need to find two things what is my total number of chocolates so my total number of chocolates is always the sum of all the overlapping cases means sum of all these cases okay like 80 plus 70 plus 60 that is in this case 80 plus 70 plus 60 is equal to 210 then i'll think that okay i've got 210 chocolates with me okay that's the first thing to find in chocolate distribution concept the second thing to find in this is to how many people i need to distribute here so here i need to dis distribute to 100 students okay so 210 chocolates are to be given to 100 students <clears throat> sorry so 100 people right so now and now this is the funda so now think like this here so always it's the case okay so total you add this 80 plus 70 plus 60 or any any question right all the overlapping cases you add okay and they, this is the sum of uh, number of students here that is sorry there was sum of chocolates here at 210 chocolates in total to be given to 100 students correct now the question says that maximum number of people playing all three sports but there is a condition here that when each sport is being played by at least one student so now the third thing is that i need to give one chocolate per case per distribution okay now this this points i am writing in general these are not related to any question okay in general in every question i need to do this i need to find first of all what i need to find i need to find total number of chocolates okay then what i need to find i need to find how, to how many people i need to distribute then how to distribute that we distribute one chocolate per case per distribution that means to here i'll do i'll distribute one chocolate ah uh, one case that means there are three cases here people playing football badminton and hockey so one chocolate per football i'll 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 distribute in football okay so one people playing football will get one chocolate now obviously one student or one people playing two games here correct let's say there it is playing he is playing football and badminton both so for football i'll give one i'll give one chocolate for badminton i'll give one more chocolate total two chocolates if somebody is playing football badminton and hockey right then i'll be giving three chocolates right so people playing football badminton and hockey will get three chocolates people playing football and badminton or any two sports or any two sports will get two chocolate okay and similarly people playing any one sport will get one chocolate that's the distribution that is in every question right now we distribute 
the maximum number of people who playing uh, playing all three sports when each sport is playing by at least 20 student, student that is the minimum condition given here that each sport should be played by at least one student so what to do here yeah so there are 100 people here so there are let's say there are 100 people so 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are till 100 people here so to everybody what will what, what i'll do <clears throat> sorry i'll be giving one chocolate each so one chocolate each i'll be giving to everyone now because the question says that each sport is, is being played by at least one student. I'll give one chocolate to everybody, right? <clears throat> uh, okay. So now what, I, what uh, a bit of uh, that uh, uh, throat issue here. It's fine. I hope it's fine. Okay. So now one chocolate to 100 people I'll give. Fine, that's fine. So that means out of 210 chocolates, my 100 chocolates are finished. Okay. So I'm left with 110 chocolates now. Correct. Now I need to maximize the number of people to whom I am giving three chocolates. Correct. I am giving three sports, playing three sports means giving three chocolates. So what I'll do now? So I'll, all my 110 chocolates, I'll try to distribute quickly between these guys. Okay. That means, and also one people, one people can get maximum three chocolate because there are only three games here. So to one, I can give maximum three. So I want to give maximum number of people playing three chocolates. Okay. So I give one to everyone now. So what I'll do? I'll give two to everyone. So once I give two chocolates to everybody, ah, so till how many people, people I can reach, we have got 110 chocolates with me. Okay. So I can reach to 55 people now. So to 55 people I can reach where I can give them initially one chocolate and now two chocolates more. So one to 55, right? So 55 people will get two chocolates is each. So my answer is 55 for this question. So max number of people playing all the three sports is equal to what is equal to 55. That's the answer for this question. All of you getting it right. Okay. That's how you see this, this kind of question. So just try to uh, satisfy the minimum condition given in the question. For example, one people playing each sport. Okay. So I'll give you just, uh, I'll give like this. So one chocolate to everyone. So out of 210 chocolates, 100 chocolates are finished. So now uh, 110 chocolates are left. And now to maximum people, I need to give three chocolates each. So what I'll do, I'll give three to everyone. Right. So 55 is there. Also, I need to see that I need to once once cross check that. Okay. I need to once cross check that. Is this number not violating the condition of the question here? For example, if my answer was 50 is my if my answer was 65 instead of 55. For example, okay. So while maximizing and minimizing with something we tend to overdo, right? So if suppose my answer was 65 for this question. Okay. But 65 is not the correct answer, right? Because I see that hockey is being played by only 60 people so how can 65 people play all three sports right seeing the virtue of this question i can see that only by maximum 60 okay so maximum 60 people can uh, play all the three sports now which can they can be common to all three sports correct so my answer can't be greater than can't be more than 60 here right that's why 55 is correct it's acceptable but if if it was 65 then i would have crossed and i i would have said that my answer is 60 only because it can't be more than 60 correct so that's why once you need to cross check after maximizing and all okay that you are not doing any mistake here correct right so now let's try to uh, solve one set based on this right okay Now look at this set here basically it's a, a master set i have prepared some seven questions here okay so once you solve all the seven questions one by one you'll get a lot of idea about how to tackle this kind of questions okay so this set is basically just try to relate it, it with normal life so basically it says that the following table gives the number of students who secured more than 90 percent marks in each of the five subjects english physics chemistry mathematics biology ah from class 6 to class 10 so this used to happen in our classes right if you remember our school days so in class 6 suppose there are it gives that this this the, this table gives that in class 6 there are 30 people so if i make list of all the people who get more than 90 percent so i see that okay 12 names are above uh, in english 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 are there 16 names are in physics there came in 15 in chemistry in 22 in math and 18 in biology so obviously if i add all this here if i add all this 12, 16, 28, 43, 65, and 83. So I get this 83. I get this 83 here. Correct. That means obviously people are only 30, right? 
so there must be overlapping no that means multiple uh, in uh, one guy is getting multiple 90 percent is in um, uh, in this subjects so right so more than 90 percent in more than one subject okay so obviously this is a set actually so we got a set very normal it used to happen in our school it used, it used to happen in our school days also these things right so now i can go with the question okay what is the first question it says that yeah it says that what is the maximum number of students who can secure more than 90 percent in all the subjects together from class 6 to class 10 so maximum number of students who can secure more than 90 percent in all the subjects together right this becomes an easy becomes an easier question no need to apply chocolate distribution here very common sense kind of question right that maximum number of students who can secure more than 90 percent in all the subjects observe class 6 so in english 12 people have scored in physics 16 have scored in chemistry 15 have scored in math 22 in biology 18 so can i say that uh, what is the maximum number of students who can secure more than 90% in all the five subjects? So which is the minimum of this row? Which is the minimum of this row? That is 12 here. Correct, 12, no? Because maximum 12 people can be common to all the five subjects. For example, if I say, if you say, me, sir, no, my answer is 15. 15 people can score more than 90% in all the five subjects. So I'll say you're wrong. Because I can see here that in English, only 12 people are scoring more than 90%. Right. So how can it be 15? Getting it. So that that's the problem here. So basically the minimum of this row can be common to all the subjects. So answer for class 6 will be 12. Similarly, answer for class class 7. Correct. So for class 7, the minimum minimum of this row is 15. I can say that that means 15 people can score more than 90% in all the five subjects. That is the minimum 15, right? Okay, of this row. And that becomes the maximum because it can't be more than 15, no? If you tell me, no, sir, my answer is 21. Okay, then I'll tell you that, you're telling me that 21 people have scored more than 90% 90, 90 in all the five subjects. That's wrong, right? Because I know that it's not 21 because in English, only 15 have scored. So how can 21 people score more than 90% in all the five subjects? That's not possible, right? Take care, it's possible. That means for in class seven, it is only 15 here. Take care. Abhi abhi so now uh, if you see here, so in class seven, we have got this number in class eight, we have got this number as seven. In class nine, we have got this number as 10. And in class 10, we have got this number as 15. What is my answer guys? 12 plus 15 plus seven plus 10 plus 15. So it is 34, 10, 44, 15, 59. So 59 is the answer for first question. I hope all of you got this, right? Okay. So let's continue with the question number two in the next video, right? It's a series of seven questions. So it will be split in multiple videos. Okay. Chalo. Yes, guys. So also do enroll for this AIMT. It is All India Mock Test by Unacademy. It is absolutely free of cost to everyone. Huh? Uh, so you can just enroll through the, uh, uh, this uh, link pin in the comments. Okay. And you can just put one invite code here. They will ask for invite code that is you can put Ravi Rodha there. Okay. And then you can access for all these tests. So the 17th October test was done today, uh, was connected today only. You can access this missed test also and do enroll for the next test as 24th of October. So these are really some high quality tests and they're taking the last four year average of the CAT paper. We have just kept the difficulty level around 10% above CAT. Okay. So this should be very near to the CAT experience. Okay. That will be facing on 28th November. So we have done a lot of hard work. So to try to give all these tests in the in the time and in 24th of, on 24th October at 12:30 p.m. Enroll through the uh, link that is pinned in the comment. So most of the questions in the tests are reviewed by me, and uh, we have tried to maintain that uh, utmost quality as, as per the CAT level. Okay, so do give these tests. Yeah, thank you.